Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more Am I the Butthole Mixed with Relationships 2. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. It really does help out the channel. I know I say it all the time, but it really, really does. And let's crack on with today's first stories. Now, today's first story comes from a throwaway account. It's titled, Would I be the asshole if I deleted my friend's engagement pictures? And it does come with an update. I tried to be short. Sorry, English is my second language. I got married last fall. Where I live, all means the trees are changing colors, so the wedding pictures are to die for. We didn't have a huge budget, so a friend of mine asked her friend if she could do it for me. I'd seen some of her work and she is really talented, plus she's a total sweetheart. The only thing is, for what she charges and since it's more of a hobby, you'll get your pictures when you'll get them. Well, I got them and now I need to know if what I'm about to do falls into asshole territory. A few days after my wedding, my friend announced to me that she was engaged. I was ecstatic and wanted to know everything. Turns out she got engaged at my wedding. My brain gets out of this vegetative state and I remember her table being way too excited at some point, but I blamed the alcohol. I wasn't thrilled about it, realizing that she had basically not only gotten engaged at my wedding, but instead of hiding it and announcing it later, she announced it to our friends during the party. It was a tough pill to swallow, but I figured whatever, it's not like I even realized what was happening. We did have a discussion about it and she didn't seem to understand why I was upset until I put it into perspective for her. Asking her how she would feel if I made a big announcement at her wedding, taking the attention away from her big moment. In my friend's mind, it's no longer the day I got married, it's now also the day she got engaged. On my dime. We eventually turned the page and I thought it was over. Well, I've sort of been friends with my photographer since the wedding because of common interests. At some point, she point blank told me that now that we are closer, she feels comfortable asking me what to do with my friend's pictures because it makes her really uncomfortable. During the evening, the wedding party took a break to go change and during that time, my photographer was taking pictures of foliage and the venue. My friend apparently asked her to take pictures of her and her boyfriend. She didn't really see a problem since we weren't back yet and they were guests. That's until she realized they were engagement pictures. Some poses just don't leave place to interpretation. So when she asked me what to do, that, you know, accidents happen, I told her to just put them in a separate folder. Ever since, I've been thinking about what I'm going to do with that folder. My friend has been asking me about my wedding pictures periodically, but haven't asked about her pictures specifically. It was easy when I didn't have them, but now I do. I've had them since April and I know she will eventually come out of hiding now that COVID restrictions are loosened. I want to delete the folder since they are my property anyway, but I don't want to be a major asshole either. Before you say it, I do realize I haven't forgiven her at all like I initially thought. And we'll start off with Walther Wins who says you would be the asshole. Getting engaged was rude, but already occurred and didn't impact your experience that day as you weren't even aware. Even though she was tacky, try to be happy that there was extra love slash reason to celebrate that day. Choosing to destroy something special will just grow the pain she caused. Don't make the situation any uglier than it needs to be. Start your marriage with forgiveness and grace instead of justified pettiness and revenge. Give her the folder, ask for compensation if you want to. Jesus Marley says, yes, you would be the asshole. Your friend didn't make an announcement. She got engaged and the only ones who knew were the folks at the table she was sitting at when it happened. Also, she tried to be discreet and didn't say anything to the photographer either. It sounds to me like she was excited but was still trying to keep it low key for your sake. That said, if you believe she is a horrible person for having the audacity to say yes and unintentionally hurt you, that is your choice. Destroying those photos is a conscious decision on your part to hurt your friend. Lumber Dan says, everyone sucks here. Why are so many people so petty about a guest getting engaged at their wedding? They clearly weren't taking too much attention away from you if you didn't notice at the time. There was a very good chance that they didn't do it with any ill intentions. After all, weddings are very romantic occasions. I do, however, think it's in bad taste for them to benefit by using your photographer, then ask multiple times for your wedding photos. 
especially as we all know they're only asking selfishly to access their engagement photos. I think it would be incredibly petty to delete their photos, plus it would be hard to explain how they went missing. Arch says, oh wow, not the arsehole. You'd be well within your rights. Announcing an engagement at someone's wedding is awful, but I would have been okay to let it go, like you. She might not have known a proposal was coming and they didn't announce it to the room at large. Your initial response to her was good, but the photographer thing is absolutely unacceptable. I think I'd keep her hanging. Let her see the photos you've chosen of your special day. Never mention hers. If she asks, you can then make her explain why she got your photographer whose time you had paid for and allocated to take pictures that weren't about your day. You can choose whether to delete the photos or charge for them, but hopefully she'll be sufficiently embarrassed it will make her think. If not, I'm not certain but actually want her as a friend. Love, faith, and healing says not the asshole. She cheated you out of money, be it a hundred or thousands of dollars. Wedding photos cost money, engagement photos cost money. Moreover, she knew what she was doing when asked the photographers to take those photos. My suggestion is, one, never mention them and act like you have no idea what she is talking about. Two, ask your photographer how much she charges for an engagement shoot and tell the friend if she wants those pics, she needs to pay you for them. I'd bet my whole left foot if someone did this to her on her wedding day, she would light the world on fire. OP replies saying, I didn't actually consider that, although it was definitely not thousands of dollars. Like I said, our budget was pretty tight and she doesn't charge nearly as much as she should for the work she does. I think it is worth exploring though, asking her how much she would have charged for it and from there, I'll have a better idea of what to do. And one final comment from PM Mayor who says, not the arsehole. She not only got engaged at your wedding, but also got the photographer you paid for wedding photos, not cheap, to do their photos. Yikes. I wouldn't blame you for just deleting those photos. You could get her to pay the photographer for those specific photos, but not the asshole either way in my opinion. So then OP updated their post, which said, thank you for the huge response. Your insight really helped. My update isn't really exciting, I'm afraid. When I wrote the original post, I was at the end of my rope and worked up all at the same time. But I stepped back and listened to your ideas. Although it was tempting to Photoshop hidden objects and um, body parts on her pictures, we headed towards the civil path. So nothing dramatic, sorry. I talked with my photographer to see if she wanted to sell them the pictures. The way she sees it, they are my pictures to do whatever I want with since I paid for them. So my husband and I decided to leak a few of our pictures on social media and wait. It didn't take two days that she was asking about her pictures. I met with her and we talked a lot. Long story short, deep down, she knew I would be angry about the proposal. The announcement and the photo shoot, but her immediate want blurred her judgment and after that, she was gasping for air trying to manage everything without losing me as a friend, but she admitted that she did it all wrong. She seemed genuine in her regrets and it was a bit comforting to know that she was also struggling with this on her side. I'm a terrible person. She said that she wished she didn't announce it at my wedding, that the whole night she was worried I would learn about it through our friends or some of my relatives sitting next to them and that I'd never talk to her again. And then it was all done and she didn't know how to navigate through all of it. When I confronted her the first time, she felt that if she admitted her wrongs, then she'd lose me in the process and she decided it'd be better to just invalidate my feelings. Not how she worded it, but pretty much. She didn't come clean about the pictures because she figured that would be a problem for future her. I told her that I would have preferred she was honest with me. That a lot of hurt and betrayal I felt came from her sneaking around and validating my feelings by acting innocent. This could have been dealt with months ago had she just owned up to everything back then. I told her that our friendship was definitely hurt by it and I didn't know if it'd ever go back to what it was. So yeah, as far as I'm concerned, this case is closed and we're building towards a better tomorrow. ETA, I forgot the most important part. I gave her the pictures, free of charge. It was just not worth all the drama. We have common friends and money tends to make things cold. It would also not make it okay or make me feel better. And we didn't want anyone to use it against us if that makes sense. Like, why don't you go back to being friends now, right this second? She paid for them, didn't she? Some people have this weird idea that money erases everything. 
Someone calls Opie a nice person and still questions, you know, the friend's intentions and what they're really like, to which Opie replies saying, I don't know if I'm really a nice person. I feel like a nice person would have done it because it would have made her friend happy. I did it because it made sense and I figured there would be no retaliation from that. Well, except from Redditors who demand blood. She is definitely a long way home. I don't trust her anymore and a lot of our friends are also on the fence and she knows that. This was definitely a mini victory for me. She knows it's up to her to clean up her mess, but I do think that people change. I know I have, so why not her? But I also know that it may not happen and I'm okay with that. And the rest of the comments pretty much on this update, like OP said there, they were pretty much just looking for blood, saying that they would have basically fucked over that friend and never given the photos or deleted the photos and OP's just opened themselves up to being a doormat pretty much. But what are your thoughts on this particular situation? How do you think you would have handled it if it was you? Would you have acted like OP? Would you have done something different? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below and let's move on to another story. And this next story comes from Pretend Panda. It does come with an update as well titled Am I the Arsehole for not moving to help my brother and sister-in-law with Neurodivergent Nephew? I'm the lone childless adult in my generation of a large family and I live within easy driving distance of five siblings with spouses and kids. The youngest, six, all boys, are doing remote school from my house. They are 4, 5B, 5R, 6, 7B and 7E. They are bright and curious and have been having a great time. Here's the am I the arsehole part. The parents of 5R asked me to move in with them. 5R is neurodivergent. I had no idea about any of this before Sunday night and really struggled with the preschool. They were referred to a major academic medical center and given a sucky prognosis. He's got an IEP and an OT and, and all kinds of everything, but since world events, he hasn't had any prescribed therapies or enrichment. Since school started back up at my house, he has normalized. He's reading and writing and mathing and, and will not stay in the house while anyone practices a stringed instrument which turns out to be a great time for feeding the chickens. They took him for a re-evaluation last week and were told that whatever they had done was important and needed to continue. 5R told the evaluator he wanted to come live with me because it is quiet. There are many books on the floor and there's a gecko. It is robotic, sort of. We, boys and I, have a deal about the gecko and its environment based on how school things go. I don't want to move. I am disabled physically. My house is adapted and I value the independence I have. My brother and sister-in-law's house is not adapted, nor is it easily adaptable. Multi-story, so lots of single step up and down room thresholds. I get along well with this sister-in-law, but three of my other sister-in-laws, two stepmothers and all four of my sisters do not. So the current MO of visitors wouldn't work. I told them I didn't want to move for reasons above and that I thought we needed to give 5R a while and we can revisit any time. They said that was a good working plan and I believe my sister-in-law when she says that's good with her. She is super direct and very clear about her wants and expectations. Who is not chill? My sister-in-law's family and friends who are all over everything yelling and yelling at and about me about my outrageous selfishness depriving a fragile child a fragile child of love and support. Also bizarrely, my mum, who adores 5R, is just frantic that he have all the intervention and every other opportunity ever now. Right now, now, now. I don't care about my sister-in-law's family, but my mum chiming in gives me pause. It's plausible to me that not having had young children or struggled with getting a neurodivergent child to a healthy adulthood my perspective is inadequate and I am making a selfish and destructive choice. So, am I the arsehole for not making plans to move, which would require construction and turmoil and create lots of adult relationship tension, and instead seeing how things go? Now, firstly, I thought it was absolutely wonderful that OP was opening up their house to do remote school from there anyway. I think that's just like more than generous straight away in itself. And whilst I think Opie is a wonderful person and is probably really helping out, you know, these children, also part about the environment that, that she creates in her own space. You know, 5R said that he told the evaluator he wanted to come live with you because it's quiet and there are many books on the floor and there's a gecko and, you know, the environment around yourself and him is just 
is a great fit for him. So rather having you move in with them, why can't they create the space that's almost equal to what you have as, as close as they can? But as I said, to me, you're absolutely not the arsehole. Um, and we do have an update in a second, but Princess of Perky says not the arsehole. I think you are being so generous having them do remote school at your house, but in no way are you remotely obligated to move in with them. I hope you replied saying they are so much fun. It is ridiculously fun. I think it is because I am not the parent and I am not the teacher. And so I just get to think about what is the most engaging way for this particular small human to absorb this information and then do it with them. And they get along very well and try to help each other. Plus their schedules and the school materials are so strange that I do not know how actual employed parents are surviving. Jack Burton says, not the asshole. Five R likes your home and wants to live with you. It's quiet with lots of books. Him spending more time with you would make more sense. Edited because I found this sentence specifically asking OP to move in with them. I think they're missing the point to be honest. They can try to imitate your home, but you move in wouldn't create the same space. Chaz says not the asshole even a little bit. Part of the charm of your house to 5R is that it's your house. If 5R is flourishing under your guidance, they should be doing what they can to recreate your space and vibe in their own house and continue doing what you are doing that has helped so far. Who knows, maybe the change of you moving would make things not work as well or, or maybe it's in part having cousins around that have assisted in the current progress. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And the comments pretty much just continued down this path saying, you know, it's, although Opie is absolutely wonderful and for sure they're helping, helping their nephew, but it's probably more to do with the environment that Opie has created. So the update said, this is not exactly exciting, but has been meaningful for us. I called my mum and told her she was not welcome to visit or call while the boys are having school here because she's making a lot of drama and prioritizing what will make her feel better about 5R over what he has asked for and what his parents, who really love their kids and do a damn good job, and their trusted professionals are advising. I set this limit because of feedback I got in the comments and a couple of DMs and for the first time in recorded history, my mum apologized to my brother and sister-in-law, specifically for being disrespectful and thoughtless of their parenting choices and shooting her mouth off in a way that made a difficult situation harder. My brother, sister-in-law, 5R, and I had a conference call with a team that did his evaluation to talk about what we should be focusing on and how best to work on his schoolwork. And they said to take cues from him and not to get into a pattern of him getting overstimulated because then he'll be less able to self-regulate in other ways. And it was like watching comprehension fireworks go off for my brother and sister-in-law, so that was very great. This call was made because of a specific comment and it has been a big deal for 5R and his family. Huge. I do not think life-changing is an understatement. My sister-in-law has gone no contact with her family because she considers all the social media stuff they did to be really overstepping, petty and mean, and doesn't want her kids to think that it's okay in the family to try and bully by humiliation. We had a big meeting with 5R, all the other cousins and all the parents. The result is 5R is now staying at my house Sunday, Monday, and Thursday nights. He has his own room. He refers to this as one bed for each butt cheek, <laughs> which is almost certainly stolen from an older brother or cousin. And starting in 2021, every fourth weekend, all the cousins are sleeping over Friday and Saturday nights. It will be absolute havoc. <laughs> so thanks again for people of Am I the Arsehole. Your thoughtfulness has been very valuable to us. And I just can't get over what a lovely family dynamic OP is creating and helping out the other parents as well. I think it's really nice for this to end on such a positive note and I'm overjoyed for OP pretty much. But what do you guys make of this situation? I can't can't get over the probably the relief the parents are, are feeling with everything that's going on right now but let me know your thoughts down in the comments below but just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories your love support and time always means the absolute world to me and you change the channel on the daily if you would like to get further involved maybe listen to the podcast if you'd like to go to mark-narrations.com and select your favorite podcast there and hopefully i will see you in the next one Take care, guys, and much love. Wake up, get up, stretch my legs, eat some breakfast, milk and eggs, brush my teeth up, wash my 
face Throw my clothes on, start my day Wake up, I can smell the smoke from the bacon Let's go, see the sun shining from the windows Okay, I know that's a damn